and welcome to the Sports Sit Down and happy, happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys from us here at Sports Sit Down. Uh, for our show today, we're going to be talking about the NFL playoff picture because it's heating up like crazy and the NBA offseason because weirdly the NBA is only a month away. And also, if we can, we'll talk about the college football playoff scenarios because that's also getting very exciting. Uh, for our panel today, I'm Sunny Sagani, your host, and we have CJ Rulo, Kieran Casa, and Nate Martin. Uh, so guys, let's get right into it with the NFL playoff picture. Uh, it's honestly a really a lot of scenarios and people are going crazy, especially uh, people who do this job for full time because there's so many different scenarios. Uh, there's also a scenario where the Texans can get in. There's a scenario where uh, the lowly Dallas Cowboys can get in and all sorts of stuff is, can go on. This is the playoff picture as is right now on your screen. Pittsburgh is number one in the AFC. They're undefeated, the only undefeated team in the NFL. And New Orleans is number one in the NFC. Uh, those two seem to have locked it up, but it gets really spicy down at the six, seven spot. Um, and I guess let's go start with the AFC guys. What do you, I mean, there's a two teams here in the AFC South that are battling out Tennessee and Indiana. Do you guys think those two teams are going to be making the playoffs and it, will it hold that way? If they'll be uh, in the bubble. Yeah. I, I think both of these teams will make the playoffs. Um, Tennessee obviously being carried by King Henry. Once again, uh, Derek Henry's having another insane season. He hasn't gone injured. That was the main concern. We knew if he didn't get injured, he would have had another pro bowl season, which he has. Um, and then Indiana's just getting carried that by that defense. They've been holding some of the top offenses to under 20 points. They held uh, the Ravens to a poor game. They, they've it, just had a solid, solid season defensively having big upsets. And uh, that's obviously showing up that showing that they are a legit team. So yeah, I do see both AFC South teams making the playoffs here. Yeah. I'm going to agree with Nate. Both those teams seem like a lot for the playoffs. Of course, the Titans, the one worry is the defense. It has not been what they expected, but King Henry and that solid offense will lead them. And Indiana, along with the defense, um, they're trying a running back by committee with Jonathan Taylor, uh, Naheem Hines, and mm -hmm. um, the third guy. Anyone <laughs> know his name? Uh, it's Hines Taylor. And you had him last time we were talking about I had him this. last time. All right. So the, 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 the third they, guy. They have three very good running backs. And yeah. and it's working. The Philip Rivers has been the veteran presence that team needs. I think both those teams are a lock for the playoffs. CJ, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a different question here. The Cleveland Browns, how about them? I know you've taken shots at them in the past because obviously you've been watching football for a you know, very, very long time, and you remember the Browns being very, very, very bad. All of a sudden, they're really good. Do you like their chances? And uh, to assist you here, their upcoming schedule is the Jaguars at Titans. They face the Ravens, the Giants, the Jets, and the Steelers. Well, I will say this much. Two of, the, the two of their last three games being the Giants and the Jets, those are essentially going to be right in Ws, Giants and the Jets, both not <laughs> having great years. Hey, it's just a fact. My mom's a Giants fan, and she's like, eh, the Giants. Eli's still on the team. No, Mom, he's not. But, no, this the, the hard two games they're going to have are going to be the Titans game in two weeks and the Steelers game. If they can get through both of those, either winning or looking comfortable, they don't even have to win. Imagine if they lose by, like, three points in each game they're most likely going to be a lock. Jaguars are probably three more years away. Ravens, eh, it's the Ravens. They're having an up and down year, but I'm impressed with how much the Browns have turned this around. And it's not like they've been winning, you know, blowouts. It's been close games, but the close ones count all the same. So yeah, they're definitely, unless something crazy happens, they're basically going to be a lock. Yeah. I'm it's with you. Jordan I was really Wilkins. impressed his with name, the, His name is Jordan Wilkins. He's a third running back for the Colts. There you go. Wilkins. Uh, Stanton Lines. So I'm going to move to Nate now. Let's talk about Las Vegas because that's kind of a, a – seems. I just found this out minutes before we went live. It's kind of a sensitive topic for Nate. Nate, you want to explain why? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, I made a bet with my uh, friend that if the Raiders make the playoffs, I will be shaving my head. Um, and right now, if the playoffs were to start tomorrow, I would lose this these beautiful locks. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it's rough, but – on the bright side, for me, the Raiders have a very, 
very tough uh, uh, closeout schedule. I'm just looking at the schedule right here, and they're playing the Falcons, and the Falcons still are a very strong team offensively. They're playing them. They play the Jets. That's a win. We know how good the Colts are. That's a, never, that's a playoff team. Chargers could are, are really inconsistent, but they still have Justin Herbert leading the way, who's now a lock for rookie of the year, basically. Um, and then week 16 is the game that I'm really looking forward to. Because the other team that is six and four, one of the other teams that is six and four in the AFC is the Dolphins. And the Dolphins are playing the Raiders in week 16, both led by uh, young rookies, out, uh, young players out of Alabama and Tua and Josh Jacobs. Um, it's going to be a very entertaining game. I'm definitely going to have that one uh, on my eyes. So yeah, I, I, the sports sit down, looks like we're cheering for the Raiders to make the playoffs. Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> officially, officially. Um, so Ra- the Ravens could still sneak in. Like it, it's off, it's a three horse race for seven basically right now. The Ravens, Raiders, and uh, the Dolphins, and they all play. They all, we know they're going to get some guaranteed wins because all of them played really weak teams. I think two of them play the Jets, and the Ravens also have a couple easy games to close out the season. And then they also a couple of them play each other, so it's going to be very interesting to see all of them really control their own destiny at this point. Yeah, that the key is the week sixteen game against the, the Dolphins. I think that's going to come down to be who, whoever wins makes the playoffs. And um, like Kieran said, we're unofficially rooting for the Las Vegas Raiders just for for fun, not for Nate's hair though. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore, Miami, two interesting teams. Obviously, they both have found, seem to have found their franchise quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, obviously, last year's MVP. They are surprisingly not in the playoffs. They were, before the season started, they seemed to be a lock to be number one seed, number two seed. They're out of the playoffs currently. Do you see them making the playoffs? Uh, Their schedule is obviously a little harder. They have to play the best team in the NFL, Pittsburgh Steelers. They're playing the Browns again as well. And then they gets kind of easy Jaguars, Giants, Ravens, and also the Cowboys. But that Steelers game could get canceled. That Steelers game could get canceled because – True. I mean, but I think eventually they're going to have to play each other. Yeah, they're they're going to have to play. Oh, like in that week 18 thing right over? I, I was – I don't know much about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. I think if you can't – I don't think any team can go in without – Yeah, all, all, all teams have to play all 16 games. But, okay, so – I think the Ravens have the best shot out of all six and four teams because yes, they play the Steelers. That's probably going to be a loss, but then every other game here looks like it is a winnable game for the, uh, the Ravens. You play the Cowboys. Cowboys have no defense. You're playing the Browns. That's probably the trickiest game past the Steelers. And then you got Jacksonville, uh, the giants in Cincinnati without Joe Burrow. So, um, it's looking to be a very the, – the, the I'd say the worst result for the Ravens there is a two-loss. They closed the season out, what, 4-2? Uh, so, But, but, but I mean, you said the word you, – you, you said the words winnable game for the Ravens. I think they've lost or come close to losing many winnable games already this year. I mean, yeah. they beat the Eagles by two. They gave up like 17 points in the fourth quarter. They were up yeah. like – they were up big in the Eagles, almost blew that lead. They lost to the Patriots. I mean, yes, you can say it was like raining, but I mean, they're a run first team. So that, that shouldn't have been a huge problem. Um, I think, I, I think, yes, they beat the Browns by a lot. They beat them 38 6 earlier, early in the year, but I think this is a different Browns team, a better Browns team. I, I could honestly see them not making the playoffs. Okay, so I'll ask this as a closing question for the AFC. Will it hold as is, Kieran, simple yes or no? Not the positions, but the teams that are in, the seven teams that are in, will it hold as is? All seven, all these seven teams, no matter the positions, are we going to see them come January? No, I'm going to see – I'm going to say the Raiders fall out. Okay, Nate? I'm going to say no. I see the Raiders falling out. <laughs> CJ? Um, I also say no, but I see, I could actually see Cleveland falling out because of their schedule and having them possibly replaced by Miami, actually. Okay. Well, I'm also going to say no, because I <laughs> just fall out and see the Dolphins come in. Okay. Uh, the NFC now, this is, I'm going to go right to you, CJ, because you, you mentioned 
it's your mom's Giants fan. So let's talk, talk about that awful, awful <laughs> NFC East. Oh yeah, man. Are, no, the I, Giants I are actually look. now that now that now the favorites. Do you think they're getting in? Their schedule is somewhat <laughs> tough. They're pit, facing the Bengals uh, tomorrow, but they have the Seahawks, Cardinals, Browns, Ravens right after that tough four week stretch. And then they face the Cowboys in week 17. Man, I'm going to say this right now. If you told me at the beginning of the year that Washington was going to be on top with, with a couple games left, I would have looked at you and said you were an insane man. <laughs> and they have the hardest, possibly the hardest end of schedule. They've got the Steelers, the Seahawks, and they've got the Eagles the last week, which actually, depending upon how the um, games before turn out, could be pretty interesting. Uh, Giants-wise, I mean, 3-7 and seven right now, Okay, they've got the Bengals. That's easy. They've got the Cowboys. Probably going to be easy. To, it's like Kier, Kieran's going to bite my head off. I don't care. Cardinal, but then it's like, man, you've got the Seahawks. You've got the Cardinals. You've got the Browns. You've got the Ravens. That's four teams who are in the playoff hunt. Man, I'm not really certain. I mean, I'm looking at the Eagles right now, and it's like, I mean, they've got the Saints, Cardinals, and Packers, and then they've got the Seahawks on Monday. I don't really think anybody's going to win out of the East, man. They they just their schedules ended up being so tough so late. I think it's going to just be whoever can win three games in the last like seven. Really, probably. they got really unlucky and having to play all four of the NFC West teams. Even the Niners are still a strong roster with a lot of the players coming back healthy. I I, yeah, I I still see Washington coming out with it. I really like um, how that running back group is playing. I like the pass rush that that young pass rush has paid off. They're definitely following the Niners too, and just wait having the first round picks after first round pick on edge and get the defensive lineman. And then Alex Smith, comeback player of the year. Wow. Um, inspiring. You, you love to see it. You really love to see it. Well, we always like to see the old man quarterback coming back and playing well, dude. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I know. I, I, Peyton, Man, I Peyton Manning's done it. You've seen Breeze do it. We've seen Roethlisberger do it. It's like we love to see it, man. Come on. Even Tom Brady's that, still doing it with the injury. Boxes it was an injury that like could that could have cost not only his career but his ability to walk. Incredible yeah. firing from from uh, Alex Smith. And and I'll remind you when he was healthy in 2018. That was the last time he was playing fully healthy. The Washington, it was then, right? But, you know, Washington was the first team in the NFC East. Mm. Uh, they were actually leading ahead of the Cowboys, ahead of the Eagles back when the Cowboys and the Eagles were really good. And they, and after he got injured, then Washington plummeted all the way down. But, I mean, I feel like right now Alex Smith could be the best quarterback in the NFC East compared to, you know, what the rest of the quarterbacks and their abysmal mm -hmm. play. So, or, Kieran, I, I, do you see I, your I Cowboys say, having a chance? I would say he's – I'd say he's not as good as Daniel Jones. Um, Daniel Jones is having a little bit of a breakout. I wouldn't say season, but he's, he's really picked it up over the last three games. And then Andy Dalton and Carson Wentz, not, not, not the best quarterbacks. I mean, the, the Cowboys have shown me no consistency. If we play like we played against Minnesota two weeks ago, I could see us going four and one to finish the season. And if we play like we played against Washington, we'll go 0-5. Um, so we play the Ravens. That's going to be a loss, let's be honest. We, we should beat the Bengals. Like, Andy Dalton's not a good quarterback, but he's better than Ryan Finley. Um, we play the Niners at home, Eagles, and Giants. I'm going to say we don't make the playoffs. Yeah. Um Carson Wentz isn't as good as Dak, but he's better than uh, Andy Dalton. So we're going to lose that game. Um, and then lost to the Giants. I'm going to say we don't make it. Um, I'm going to go with Washington. Yeah, I, I'm with you guys as well. And I'd argue it's actually better for three teams who are vying no. for a playoff position. It's better because they'll get a higher draft pick. Washington automatically drops to number 19. And they actually will have a lower draft pick than a uh, uh, high lower draft pick than a lot of these other teams who but to me, are but to me for for the for the NF, for the um for NFC for the NFC in general besides that that um four spot which is going to be held by an NFC East team um the wild everything else is just looking like locks to me I feel like yeah. not mm -hmm. determining the order now yep. here one last thing I do want to talk about for the playoffs and, and the NFL playoffs in general 
we could be seeing it two. We could if if the playoffs ended today, I could see both two seeds being eliminated. I could see the Raiders upsetting the Chiefs, and I could see the the Cardinals beating the Rams. That that though that the the way the NFL playoffs is now set up, we're gonna be we're gonna be it's gonna be a lot more chaotic, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely looking forward to the anarchy that's gonna be happening in January. Absolutely, uh, I'm I'm gonna agree with Nate that this playoff picture holds with the Saints. Uh, Saints, Cardinals, Rams, Green Bay, Tampa, Seattle, and then that four spot I think still up in the air. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say this this playoff picture holds. You know, I'll, I'll ask a different question this time since I think it's it's very obvious itself. Do we have any pretenders here? Nate kind of alluded to it. Uh, I mean, obviously, aside from this four spot, cause the four spot is a complete pretender. But I'm talking about the Rams, the Packers, uh, because that Packers Green Bay first round matchup is fantastic i mean that's the matchup we've all wanted and rogers and tom brady uh but do we have a pretender here because a lot of people think the packers are not as strong the rams are good but yeah they might have some you know jared goff is okay do you guys see any pretenders here i'm gonna say seattle's a pretender i don't trust okay. that uh, Ru- Rus- russell Wilson can only get you so far without a good defense um mm-hmm. i'm gonna say another pretender um it could honestly be Tampa Bay. That defense has looked vulnerable. They looked very vulnerable against Jared Goff last week. And honestly, I think the Rams could be the NFC's best shot. Um, that the, if, the, if Jared Goff finds consistency and is just it, it is able to play like an above-average quarterback, not turning the ball over, and be able to find his, uh, his strong receiving core, I think we're gonna we could be seeing the Rams representing the, the NFC uh, in uh, the Super Bowl. CJ, do you see a pretender here? I mean, the the only one I would honestly say would be Tampa Bay, and I mean the fact that Brady has actually played decently, especially being you know over forty, and with Tampa Bay having a bunch of they've they've had some issues throughout the year it's like i think that's one where a lot of people are probably going to lean towards it as a pretender and be like oh they're only doing well because of brady so if brady doesn't perform they're not going to look as good so i'm not really certain i mean that's the only big one i can see everybody else is pretty solid for the most part well except for washington but it's washington so who cares yeah also one would say that they might need to secure a home spot if they want to be successful in the playoffs. And that's looking extremely hard now because New Orleans has two wins against them. Okay, so that is the NFC, or excuse me, the NFC playoff picture and the NFL playoff picture. Uh, we'll probably cover that one more time before we head into the playoffs. It's going to be really, really, really interesting and uh, can't wait for it. Uh, but now let's move on to something completely different uh, because the NBA is also starting and it's about a month away. The NFL NBA offseason is like basically 90% done. We're just waiting on a couple of deals here and there, but the Lakers got seem to have gotten a lot stronger. Montrez Harrell, Wes Matthews, Dennis Schroeder, the Warriors lost Clay Thompson, but they gained Kelly Oubre and a couple of nice pieces. They also had James Wiseman. Phoenix got Chris Paul and a bunch of other nice players. They are looking very deep. Uh, Clippers got lost, obviously Harrell, but they got Serge Ibaka and company. Guys, who won the offseason, Kieran? Let's start out with you. Um, and and I'm trying to move away from just the obvious Lakers, right? Like, yeah. like we all know they won. Um, I'm gonna go Atlanta Hawks. I really liked. They made a few moves. I'll just list them: Danilo Gallinari, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Chris Dunn, Rajon Rondo, Tony Snell, and Okungu were their big pickups. Uh, losing. Jeff Teague and uh, Vince Carter, but I think I think that added a lot of a lot of good role players that could step up into bigger roles on this team. Bogdanovich, of course, everyone was really excited that he went to the Bucks. That deal fell through. I feel like a lot of people were saying that the Bucks got a lot better, and I did not hear that when he went to the Hawks. But I still think it's true. I think that's a big pickup for the Hawks. Um, Gallinari was good for the Thunder. I think he'll he'll be good here. Rajon Rondo, good veteran leadership, add some depth behind Trey Young, the young star. And then uh, Chris Dunn, another good. Uh, they just uh, added a few pieces to that bench. But I think the Hawks um, had a very solid offseason starring Gallinari and Bogdanovich. I mean, 
that that's a really strong team. I, I really I think Gallinari is probably one of the most underrated, if not the most underrated players in the NBA. Um, I re dude, a Konku off the bench is gonna be so scary because you still have Clint Capella and uh, John Collins in your front court. You obviously have Trey Young, Gallinari and Bogdanovich closing off that starting five. That's a nightmare. The one concern is obviously defense with Trey Young at point guard, but everything else is just looking really, really nice. That's a Rondo lot. Rondo of- also off the bench. I mean, he, he started on the 2020 championship Lakers. So mm. but I, I think, I think that they've added a few pieces to the starting lineup, but the, the main thing they did this off season was bolster the bench. Yeah. TJ, who do you have? I'm going to take the Clippers. I mean, you're basically taking a team that probably, I mean, they were one series away from playing the Lakers in the championship, and now you just beef them up even more. Pat P, Marcus Morris, Serge Ibaka, three big-time players. Now, yes, I will admit, Ibaka is getting old, but even still, it's like, solid player, man. You got three solid pickups, and yeah, you lose Montrez Harrell. Yes, you lose Jermichael Green. Those are two guys who probably are going to be pretty big, and they're somewhat young, but you, you got three solid pickups, man. That's going to be a good roster to watch for a year. You know, probably actually, I think Lakers. A, a lot of people are probably saying, like, what, CJ, what are you saying? I actually think he's not that wrong. A lot of scouts believe um, that it's a better fit because Serge Ibaka doesn't need the ball to be good like Montrez Harrell does, in my opinion. Like, he can, you know, he can catch and shoot and whatnot. So, I, I actually, like, I actually didn't, don't think you're off. Nate, who do you have as a, as a winner? I, I just want to add on to what CJ was saying with the Clippers. Yeah. I mean, Montre- it's not like Montrez Harrell was helping out that playoffs. He was only averaging like nine points and he was a pretty, he was pretty toxic on the court. He was, um, he got into some fights with Luka Doncic. Um, just yeah. talk- I, I, I don't think it was a good fit for, you know, Kawhi, a guy who doesn't really trash talk and is just silent on the court. So yeah, I really like what the, the, the Clippers did this offseason. I, I want to talk about uh, uh, Phoenix. Obviously losing Kelly Oubre is a big loss. Um, He's a very talented wing. We know that. We saw that last season. He averaged close to 20 points. Um, but they bring in Chris Paul, leader of the MB, uh, the MB, uh, MBPA. Um, so obviously a leader. Going to be very well liked in the locker room. Devin Booker finally got his point guard, and I'm really happy to see that. And along with a lot of great depth. Ma, uh, uh, Jay, uh, Jay, uh, Jay Crowder, um, you, keep, you still have eight in there. It's a strong team. It's a really strong team. They could be could potentially be contenders in that Western Conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually not going to go with the team. I'm going to go with the person. How about Gordon Hayward? I mean, this guy is his 30s, coming off of a couple of major injuries, not been all that effective for uh, the Celtics, even though he was supposed to be their number two star. And he got $30 million from the Charlotte Hornets. And they're actually going to pay him $39 million because of the stretch deal. But uh, 30 million for Gordon Hayward per year, 30, I mean, when you average like 12 points, 13 points per game, that is really good. So good for Gordon you Hayward. You could say that. You could say that with so many players, so many that is players true. who probably didn't deserve it, got a bag. And that's just yeah. true. Joe Harris got a four year, $75 million deal. We only know him because he won a dunk, he won a three point contest. He's, it, he is raw, but I mean, you're right. Mason Plumley, Jeremy Grant. So many got Pistons. I don't know what they were doing. Uh, the Pistons had the worst off season, I'd say, easily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the Hornets had a terrible off season as well. Them too. Yeah, I mean to spend thirty nine million dollars because remember they had to uh, cut Nicholas Batum, who had nine million per year. Yet you you're spending thirty nine million dollars. You're not paying Hayward thirty nine million, but you're spending thirty nine million dollars on Gordon Hayward. I mean, and I don't love Lamelo Ball for that. On that the team. only guy who probably yeah. got this, the only guy who probably got underpaid this offseason was Van Vliet. He should have. He he was probably one of the guy. He was probably one of the only guys this offseason who could have gotten the max contract. Yeah, so, I'll put it. You know, yeah, and I'll be right. with you guys on that. Toronto kind of. I mean, they added some guys that got Van Vliet back, but man, their their offseason just that's not a team in contention at all right now. That is not a team. Yeah, they lost, they lost a couple of pieces. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even who they signed back. I mean, they got. Uh, Boucher, they got Van Vliet, but it's like they're, I'm looking at their signings right now, and it's like they lose Ibaka, they lost uh, Gasol. Gasol, and they lost uh, O'Shea Brissett, and it's like I don't know who the heck they're signing now. I'm looking at this and like who's who are half these guys? I haven't heard of any of them. Yeah, 
and they're and they're playing in Tampa next year. So, uh, oh safe yeah, to say, real. CJ, you're not the picking... South. huh? We the South. We the South. Yeah, we the South. Yeah. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, we may not have enough time to do uh, talk about the college football playoffs, but we will have time for last wrangle. So let's just get in our thirty seconds individually, Nate. I'll have you start out. We don't get to do this anymore, man. Okay, uh, I want to talk about the big game. Stanford beats Cal on a blocked PAT. I see the go bears up on your thing, Sine, but oh man, that was such a sweet victory. That was the most satisfying big game I've watched as a Stanford fan. Special teams wins games, two blocked field goals, a muffed punt. We forced a fumble late. Um, what a win for Stanford, who regains the axe, brings it home. Karen, what do you have? Um, you know what I'm about to talk about. It's the MLB. Yes, there's not a lot going on, but it's, it's going to be a fun offseason, I think. There's no, like, big-name Garrett Cole on the market, but I think a, a name everyone should know, DJ Will make you is going to be – it's going to be a very interesting offseason. He said he wants to come back to the Yankees. Yankees – are having a little bit of some money problems with the coronavirus. No way. The Yankees yeah, we are. Problems. Yeah, we are. We, <laughs> we, 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 we can't spend like we did on Cole, but DJ Will Mayhew, uh, my favorite player, DD Gregorius, and Marcelo Zuna, three big names you should watch out for signing this MLB offseason. CJ. Cincinnati at 8 0, having a chance to be the first non Power Five team to make the NCAA playoffs. And judging who's ahead of them with Texas AM and Florida, uh, pretty likely if they win out, because one of those teams is going to lose to Alabama. And how are you going to manage to take two SEC teams at that point? Oh, well, thank you, CJ, for including some college football fans, like we promised. Uh, so I'm going to go with something. Uh, how about Sarah Fuller became the first woman ever? to play in a power five game. And I believe she just is, she's kicking today for Vanderbilt. So that's amazing. We've always wanted to see, there's always been talks yeah, about Carly yeah. Lloyd. Oh, she got to do a quick kickoff. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it's awesome to see. Field goals yet. They trail 41 nothing. Yes. <laughs> oh, come on. Vanderbilt, yeah. you got to score. No, it's Vanderbilt, uh, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, congratulations to her. The Vanderbilt football program is something we all want to see. And we hope to see. Uh, so that does it for a sports sit down. Uh, we'll keep you tuned in on the NFL playoff race. Obviously, the MLB offseason and the end day will start up in a month. We hope you stay safe and you spend some time with your family and friends. And take care. For Kieran Costa, CJ Rulo, and Nate Martin, I'm Sine Singani. We're signing off. Happy holidays, guys. Um.